lay coming to you today. Now, in wondering, first of all, be wondering what this fan is about. Apparently, it's one of the gifts I received from my friend back, back in China, right? I don't know what the fuck it says, but it looks like it's a fairly complicated poem on this. I was told that it was called a money fan. Okay, so for many of you who can read the little Chinese, basically, like, get the money in. How's that sound, right? The thing is, I was told if I was, you know, blow the air myself, I bring the wealthy. But if I blow the air to someone else like us, I blow away their wealth. Okay, so anyway, uh, long story short, today we're gonna shoot some content, okay? Content is about marketing, you know, so it's, it's just completely, again, random. I think yesterday or the two days before, we shoot another content in my friend's home. I talk about, at the end of the video, I talk about uh, something I learned from a famous architect called Robert Mills. All right, Ikora, Ikora, uh, you know, some connection was never. Guess what? I received this post package from him this morning, okay? Completely out of nowhere, okay? Which got me really thinking about something to do with marketing, especially when trying to market your projects. Or probably the implication of what we're going to discuss today is going to be applicable, universal, universally applicable to anything as long as you're running a business, okay? So, now typically, as a project marketer or as a developer or agency, if you engage a real estate agent to sell a project, one of the things they do is to do the good old mail drop. And I think a lot of times you should see this pro uh, promotional postage from various other companies, right? Some of them are comes in legit form, some of them are comes in cheap sort of letter envelopes, right? So this is one of the typical uh, project marketing, I don't know, we call flyer, you typically receive from the from the mailbox, right? So, and uh, what do you think you can do with it? You know, I think nine out of 10 times, chances are uh, that's not the only one you received. You probably received a hundred dozens like that, right? So therefore, chances are you're gonna end up in the bin, okay? But this one is slightly different. It's a reminder me of the, you know, if you, some of you owning this American black, black card, where it's just a credit card, but you really need to uh, spend a lot of money in terms of annual membership for you to get in. Then when they give you the initial onboarding process, they give you a big black case where you really need to give you this unboxing experience to feel privileged, all right? So, but this one is pretty much, the reason I want to shoot this content is that uh, I think it's a good story out of uh, this unboxing experience. So first of all, you can see, so then uh, obviously it's his own project, so you want to promote it. So he hand writes my name onto it with my address, all right? It has come with customized Robo Mins uh, envelope, Right, so they customize it, design, you can see the shape, the size is all different. So we're really, really getting attention. And it's quite thick, so if you touch this, let me know, it's really thick. Mm -hmm. That created a little bit interest in me, right? So I'm gonna say, oh, what's this is really about? So when I unboxing it, there is a two things in there, okay? There is a letter, which is personalized letter from their office which I'm gonna go a little bit in detail about that. And secondly, is a little promo about his project. And look at how thick it is, mm -hmm. right? So if you ever print some name card or in the printing industry, there's something called a GSM or, or something like that. This is really, really thick and expensive to print. If you do this in Australia, not really saying anything about a project was never, okay? Which is quite interesting because sometimes Doing less means it's more, especially in a high-end project. And on the back, talk about Robert Mills, which that photo is inject enormous amount of emotion. And it's something what I call is implicit selling versus explicit selling. If you, if explicit selling simply means that, uh, you know, let's say you're selling an iPhone, you're gonna tell all the features and functions, why it's the best phone in the world, camera, blah, blah, blah. Implicit simply means that I'm not directly talking about benefit, how good the building looks, how good quality is, rather I'm start implying. And by showing Robo Mills, you know, I don't know what he's doing, so he's, you know, 
pretty much got a pen in his mouth and then flip some papers, inject his in action. And what it give you feeling? It's kind of like give you a, a sort of solid feeling that this project implies the project is handcrafted by him, which is further implies the quality, isn't it? So it's very, very interesting. So that's interesting, right? Obviously, every good marketing need to have a call to action. So they have call to actions, register, where you can register, and where you can where you can course and so forth. Okay, that's the half of the equation. Then we got this little letter, which is I find it's quite interesting as well. A lot of times when you're writing something, we call copywriting. And I think I can guarantee that if you're looking at IEA, look at Domain, look at many other agencies or develop website, most of the copy or description they're writing on their website for a, their project is pretty much the same. Okay? They talk about premium, luxury, blah, 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 you name it. Right? Again, if you do the same thing as everyone doing, it became what? A commodity. Okay? So, how do you stand out from the competition? And it really goes uh, deep in terms of the marketing triggers. So let me talk to you a few, a few things about marketing triggers, okay? In truth sense of marketing, there is two things you can always can consider when, I know it's talking about real estate, but hey man, every business you need to have a marketing and a sales, okay? That's where the end delivery take place. No matter how good you are, if you can't market, if you can't sell, doesn't matter how good you are. Would you agree? So, so every marketing campaign, or arguably every sales conversation, especially in selling high ticket items, need to have following two main elements. One is what I call trigger. Okay? There's many different triggers. The trigger simply means an emotional trigger. There is emotional, emotion in you strike a chord with your target audience, okay? Without emotion, especially at home, man, if you're just selling a home for the sake of selling a house, selling a property, you will struggle because people are gonna start with negotiating the price, people start bringing the competition into place. But however, if you really tackle the emotional side of the things, then you start became building the chemistry between you and your prospective buyers. The second thing is how do you express this trigger? And that's what I call the storyline. Think about this. Any movie, right? Any TV shows, uh, they, what, well, in this day and age, if you're looking at this video on social, we are in about five, six, eight minutes in, in the content. If you're still watching, then I get your attention, which is good, okay? But let's say, if I get you to watching a video on the internet for two hours, it's very, very hard to do. Unless I be able to pull in something similar to what's invaded in those Hollywood movies. Then every single movie have their particular storyline, or what I call a twist, to keep you engaged, to keep you really uh, sucking to the up and downs uh, of the storyline of the movie, when the movie plays out. And same thing as your marketing copy. There's many different storylines that I probably can share with you, but today, for the sake of argument, and I want to read this thing for you, okay? This will be saying. So this is one of the paragraphs that you can see here. Start from here, okay? So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna read this for you. What makes this project unique is we are designing and delivering this residence ourselves. You already know the meticulous care I take with each design. You also know that our practice is renowned for always delivering to a superior standard. Get this, where the industry standard is to design and construct, which more often than not leads to value managing. That means cutting quarters, okay? We use a traditional fixed price contract. The RMA in-house procurement approach management is unique and it demonstrates our fundamental difference as we deliver on our design as promised. We design ourselves, we build ourselves, we project management ourselves, we sell ourselves, and we maintain an ongoing relationship ourselves. 
What it does in that little paragraph on the storyline is he uses something quite powerful. I call it. Us versus them. Okay? He says, there's many different stories I can use, but this is quite powerful. Is when you start looking, so let's say you want to tackle a market that is a lot of competitions. So you can improve your services, all right? You can gain that little competitive advantage by doing one particular process much better than the rest of competition. And you're gaining what? Marginal advantage. How? Can you totally go into a market at full competitions? Means if there is six or seven uh, developers in the area that's all developing high end project, how do you dare to be different? And the one way is instead of competing, you're gonna start th thinking about how can we, how can I, how can you position your business in a completely different manner? Means don't compete, you're just different. The way you do it is you start blocking them as what common enemy. Now, in a common enemy in the sense of not negative sense, but it's in the sense of marketing sense is that's a bunch of them, right? A bunch of them doing things in this way. And most of the times depends on whatever you do, it's especially running a project, you're running, a, uh, let's say as a developer, the market always have these pre you know, assumptions about what, about your delivery in terms of it's tricky to buy off the plan, what you get is what you, is not what you see, right? And so on and so forth, okay? And they have this what common activity about you, about them, okay? If you says, I'm one of them, say, let's say they have this common perception about pre-sale, buying off the plan, right, off the plan. They have these common assumptions about being a developer. Right, what are common assumptions? They're money to lose driven, they don't really care about quality, so on and so forth. Okay, they're cutting corners, so on and so forth. Off the plan, what are pre-consumptions? Means quality is compromised, a render is 3D render is always a 3D render, blah, 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 right? And if you just go there and market yourself as a developer and they sell it off the plan, what do you think the market gonna perceive your message? How do, they, how do you think they're gonna perceive your message? They will have what? You're gonna face with the same what? Assumptions about you. So a smart way to do it is, hold on, I'm not a developer, okay? I, the way I'm doing is completely the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So in other words, if they're doing this, I'm doing that. If they're doing this, I'm doing that. If they're doing this, I'm doing that. And you create a little, what? Contradictions in your marketing message, right? So you start attacking the common Peter Ford market. That's what he did. He using subtle, uh, implicit selling and says, look, whereas industry standard is this, our promise to our purchaser is that. He also using some triggers. What are triggers? Social proof. One of the triggers could be social proof. Okay. Social proof in the sense of implicit. Instead of saying, say, hey, look at this order of the testimonials whatsoever. I mean, if you got testimonials on the internet, everyone can search for it. But how about using something one like, if you already knew me, you would know the meticulous care I take with each design, okay? If you haven't heard Robo News before, it doesn't matter. But what, by writing that little sentence, like if you already knew me, you would know the meticulous care I take with each design, right? They already pre that, what? His good attention to detail and quality. And that's the thing with implicit selling. And that is implicit selling to deliver an emotional trigger like what? Social proof. Other trigger, emotional triggers you can use is what? Exclusivity, right? So exclusivity means this is not for everyone. It is only reserved for people who share this value, X, Y, day. Okay, it's called exclusivity. Exclusivity can also come into the play is if you are an industry leader and it's very rare to talk to you, or let's say you are a renowned you know, architect and you're really famous and it's really, really hard to get the time to talk to you, right? Or it's really expensive to engage you to design a home. But because I'm doing this project, you've got this opportunity to chat to me directly. Okay, so what he did, let's say exclusivity, you could be saying, the last thing is, 
I welcome the opportunity with you to talk about Hamilton by uh, IMA in person. What it does is again, what it, it implies the exclusive opportunity to talk to him personally, right? Which leading to the third one is what personalized. Again, in this day and age, everything is doing on a mass scale, okay? And uh, everyone's trying to grab your attention, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of become rare where some people are going to start, sit down with you and say, hey, dude, I want to understand you as a person. And I, as a designer, as a leader, not my teammates, right? I'm going to sit down, who's gonna, I'm the person who write this letter, and I'm going to sit down with you to talk to you personally. I want to showcase everything my ethos, my belief behind this project. So personalized way of communication is really, really good. Um, other things, scarcity, can, uh, other, other triggers, sorry, could be using work, scarcity. Scarcity means this is rare. It's only X, Y, B number. Now there is a real scarcity and fake scarcity. I'm gonna go into, into length this in future uh, episode of content when I talk about a bit more about how to using scarcity to drive the marketing campaign. But the scarcity says, well, this is rare today. Okay? This is rare today. And people was like, hmm, what's rare? Okay? Scarcity comes in two forms. One is in quantity and one is in quality. One is of quantitative nature, one is of qualitative nature. Quantitative nature simply means it's only uh, nine apartments. Okay? And uh, among nine apartments, it's only have two top level penthouse. Now all of a sudden, if you want a penthouse, your focus is two. Are you with me? And uh, in the two, among two uh, t uh, penthouses, among two penthouses, there's only one have north facing courtyard or balcony. So all of a sudden, scarcity is limited to one. Okay, so that's how the quanti quantity works from a scarcity perspective. Quality, however, is another way you can use. Let's say, what a Ruben Mills uses is says equally rare is the option we are offering to purchasers to commission myself and my team to handcraft your apartment to your belief. That's another form of rare, okay? And it says, in this way, we can offer the same experience which our clients enjoy when we collaborate on individual houses. So again, implicit selling. This implies that I've got clients who pay me in big bucks to design a single big architectural design homes that end up on this award. But because of this opportunity, it is a rare that you can come in to talk to us about your needs and we will handcraft your residence. Okay, as part of the process. Again, inject value, right? And there's many other triggers as well, but I think the idea is not to run you through a full-fledged marketing lesson, but rather to start thinking about what are the little details for processes or, or sophistication for a core um, to inject to your current or future marketing campaign, especially you, when you're running a development project, man. You know, the, the competition is huge. And I always say, you know, it's always amused me when I'm talking to budding developers and they was like, oh, I've attended development course. Now I can be a property developer. And I was like, dude, man, the fact that you now got a license to operate a cafe doesn't mean your cafe is profitable. What if the Bob and Smith down the roads is open a new one? How do you make sure people's coming to you for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, instead of going to them? How do you compete with them? And what to do if they're cutting their price? If they're selling their, let's say, flat wire for three dollars and fifty cents, and you're selling for four four bucks, how's that going to work? You know, why are people going to pay more to your to your ones, right? So all these little things is counts when I call the little nuance when you're doing a marketing campaign, and this is one of the example. Now, when can you use this stuff? It doesn't matter when you do postage, it doesn't matter when you're writing online copy, it doesn't matter you're doing the ads online. Start thinking about looking at your copy just to see what are emotional trigger I'm start to hitting my target audience. What are the storyline you use to express the emotional trigger in a 
in implicit manner. Because if you do, you watch, you no longer need to sell people. You start entered into the zone of being an influencer. And an influence, ability to influence, means ability to lead. It is much powerful proposition than you know to be perceived as a development company trying to offload their stock. Or it's you know it's even shitter if you plan the fake scarcity uh, as most people do. So be real, add genuine value, be bold, and be dare to be different. And I hope uh, this message is really really helping you today. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. All right. Uh, also, just remind me that I forget to uh, do the call to action, which I violate the bloody first thing I just talked to you about is every marketing message you need to have a call to action. So here's my call to action. Okay. So if you like this money fan, and uh, and I like you or like the content, the value I bring to you by this kind of content by sharing my day to day in terms of you know. Uh, the deal I came across, how assessing other people's marketing campaign, or what we do in terms of executing our projects from the very start, from the inception in terms of acquisition, all the way up to delivery, in between funding and securing pre-sales. I've got a Facebook group whereby I will um, post more of this exclusive content. Remember the marketing trigger, I talk about the exclusivity on a week to week basis, right? So that way you can really do a sneak peek in terms of uh, what a full-time developer's life is really about. And I think you can also pick up a lot of great value and nuances. So it doesn't matter if you're a buddy developer or you're a season pro on a scale your operation, I think it will be give you a most amount of value. Also on top of that, I'm gonna conduct one Facebook live call to answer any of the questions regarding how to get started, how to scale operation, or troubleshooting some of the developments, if you got any, uh, on, I think it's one Facebook call every two weeks, okay? The, the group is not live yet, but what you can do is, you can start, uh, register your interest. And if you are really interested, you can head into uh, PriyaFB.com, I think it's P-R-W-E-R-F-B.com, or alternatively, just click the link in this post, and uh, there is a very short letter I wrote explain the in and out of, uh, of what you can expect from the group. If that sounds good to you, just head into that uh, link, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. If it's, uh, and if, again, if you have uh, questions, a few comments, feel free to leave a comment, and I think someone can genuinely also get the value from this video, from this content, uh, you know, feel free to share. And uh, we're always uh, happy to help more people and uh, to collaborate with more people, okay? So that's wrapped up my uh, conversation today and uh, I'm looking forward to speak to you soon.